So I'm sure a lot of you are going to recognize this design. This is the Norm Abrams router table. It's one of the first things I made when I started this woodworking business. And for a while, I've been wanting to downsize it because it's quite large and move it to my table saw wing for multiple reasons. Right now, it's mostly um, a storage unit. And in order to use it, I have to open the door and pull it out from the wall, which is just a pain. Um, I use a router, but I don't use it a ton as compared to other people. So I can make this a little bit smaller and put it in my table saw wing. I was actually thinking originally of just buying a whole new top, but I didn't want to spend money on it. And then I figured I could cut down the cabinet if I could break it apart and just reuse the entire thing. So this video is a little bit of a departure from what I usually post, which is mostly how-to videos. Um, I'm not going to show you how I built this cabinet because I wasn't filming for YouTube when I did it. You can find these plans online if you're interested in a cabinet like this. Most of what I see on YouTube is an offshoot of this design for people making tables. Um, it's very simple. You can kind of get an idea of how it goes together just from watching the video. But I decided to film this because it actually ended up being quite entertaining. Like I said, this is one of the first things I built when I started this business. I don't even think I had my table saw yet. Um, I didn't have a dado stack. And you could really see um, the mistakes in this. It's a lot of stuff I usually point out in videos, starting with the fact that I mounted these casters so they couldn't freely spin, which is why this um, was a hard, hard thing to move around the shop in general. Um, you can see how off my face frames are. I will say that I built this cabinet completely out of square, but I was able to tweak it enough to make it look quite good, which was a little bit impressive for, for how bad um, it was putting it together. But everybody starts somewhere. So basically, I'm just going off of the size of my table saw wings. And like I said, this is going to be a fairly specialized video. But I decided to film it because you can use these dimensions to make something to fit on the edge of your table. So uh, roughly the width is being cut down by about six inches. The depth I'm keeping pretty much the same. I think I took about two inches off of that. And then the height gets cut down by about another six inches. So all I did was I cut off the edges. The thing with this was to keep everything centered. I had to decide how much I was cutting off and subtract it that equally from both sides so that everything stayed in the center. So that was a little bit of a pain. Um, and like I said, I cut off the, the, the sides, the front, I'm keeping the, the way it is. And then the back, because of this design, it has a, um, a a chamfer on the back so in order to not have a groove back there that will collect a ton of dust I actually cut that off as well um, the way that this table worked was this was one of the parts of the design I did not like was it had these um, grooves in the tabletop with T-bolts from the underside. But because of my, my shop, and especially going on a table saw, every time I wanted to take this fence off, these T-bolts would fall down into the cavity of the cabinet, which was a pain. So instead of reusing this fence, I'm going to be making a whole new fence. Um, and this design, I decided to swap this out with T-Track. I was able to um, pilfer some T-Track off of this actual fence. So I, I, um, this T-Track is all varying sizes. I have a ton of it in the shop. It's all different depths, all different widths because it comes from, from various different manufacturers. So I made a couple test cuts and then I could cut through it with uh, my dado stack. The one thing I was nervous about with cutting this was that the laminate top would get a little messed up, but all of my blades um, cut through it pretty nicely. I took out all the hardware, but you could see there were some sparks there, and that was just because I, I built this, like I said, 10, I think it was about 10 years ago, and I forgot that I had obviously put screws through the top as well as the bottom. So that's what that was. Now the T-Track I'm extending to the front. I've used a router table long enough to know that I'm always trying to clamp more stuff onto it. So those ex T-Track extensions will help um, with that. And then the design for this was this oak frame was biscuited in place. Like I said, I don't think I had my table saw at this point, which it would explain why I use these smaller size pieces of MDF and lap them together in order to get the width. But when you see the cross-section on um, that, I actually did a, a pretty decent job on the top. 
Um, this is just a quarter inch and then a half inch MDF laminated together and then it's skinned with a laminate top. If you don't want to make a full cabinet, you can just make a thick piece of, of top. That's if you go and buy a router table top, that's all it is, is, is uh, MDF with a laminate skin on it and then you can mount it on your wings. You don't need a cabinet above or below it. it that would be a basic router table and you could use the fence from your saw um, instead of making a router fence. That would be the easiest way to go about doing it. You could do that fairly quickly, especially seeing the cross section to this design. So I'm going to reattach um, my sides when I cut this down. I accounted for the fact that I was going to be reattaching the three quarter inch oak around the edge. I just like the idea of having a hardwood edge and I do believe it or not clean my table saw top somewhat frequently and that always involves water and I don't want water anywhere near this MDF so I just want to re-skim the sides. I use a slot cutter to cut a slot in there. It makes a quarter inch slot, which is great. I always have quarter inch plywood in the shop and I could just um, make a receiving slot in that oak and reattach it. So that is basically all I did for the top. There's going to be a seam obviously, but um, this is a shop where I build stuff for customers. It's not um, a showpiece shop. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I do admire people that have um, extremely nice shops but my shop is not one of those so this little seam on the edges after a while it's going to get full of sawdust I'm, I'm never even going to see it but that's basically what that looks like this is that finished top and like i said if you want a quick table you can easily measure for the opening of your wings laminate some mdf together put some um some laminate on top and and mount it that way through the rails so before I continued, I made sure those rails were uh, level. This table saw, because I have a smaller shop, usually ends up being a work surface, and that means that sometimes those rails come off level. And then I put some shims for the depth of that and leveled those as well before I started building the cabinet. I actually found the plans I bought for this, and um, like I suspected, everything's dadoed into place. I was really nervous about breaking apart this cabinet. I wanted to reuse it. I didn't want to, to build a new piece. Um, so that was that was the part I was the most concerned about. You can see just how out of square this is. I actually laughed quite a bit at how out of square this is because it's something I emphasize so much in my videos. It's usually three-eighths of an inch out. Um, I've used this for years and I have a lot of quality pieces that came off of this, but like I said, it is it is really out of square. But luckily, um, as you can see, I started breaking this apart and it started popping apart quite easily. And you'll see that's because, um, and I do remember this as I was taking this apart, I had a hard time putting this together because I didn't have a dado stack. I believe I used a router and the plywood was too thick. So you could see all of my glue was already dried before anything touched. I definitely was not using enough glue. So this popped apart really easily. I was quite grateful for that. It made my life so much easier to have this pop apart. Going forward, you could see these are my new measurements. My height's gonna be 33. That's accounting for the fact that I'm putting casters on the bottom still. So I, I gave myself a quarter inch leeway. It's gonna be easier to make this shorter than I need and shim it to height than it to be too tall because then the fence on my table saw won't work. So then going forward, most of this is just cutting everything down to size. So like I said, I took about six inches off of, I think it was a little less than six inches off the height, and I took about two inches off of the depth and about six inches off of the width. Um, I'm, what I'm doing here is re-grooving those uh, rabbits that are on the top. Uh, I needed a new one on the bottom because I cut off the bottom. The back and the top, I, I sent those through again just to clean them up. And that is the backside rabbits. And then, like I said, the bottom, I could, I could cut off about three inches off of either side and then just start reassembling everything. Um, like I said, I've been thinking about doing this for a while because down the road, I'm going to be 
um, cleaning up that that other the other side of the wall probably doing a French cleat system with cabinets and all of that and this router table it just took up a lot of space and was a pain to use so by putting it in the table saw it's already freed up so much space and it's now an extra work surface which is which is pretty nice um, I do not regret doing this at all I wish I had done it a long time ago it wasn't really an option in my older shop because the table saw was so close to the wall, but I, I'm really happy I, I decided to do this. I did this because I was waiting to install a built-in, and um, I had about two days where I could get this done. This took about two afternoons. So the only big change I had to make for the top, minus cutting everything down, was I had to um, change where the dados for those those vertical partitions are going to be, um, which will hold all the units for all the bit storage, and that is just because I obviously I trimmed off the sides. So I just moved that over, recut those grooves. The grooves that are there it won't really matter. I took a lot of this facing off. You could see I had cheated it away from the edge of the plywood to account for the fact that it wasn't square in order to fit the drawers in so I popped off a lot of that and I would reattach it later now that this whole thing's square I had these little shims on this edges which I'm assuming is because I didn't account for the fact that the dado is a quarter of an inch so when I, I put all those on there they were a quarter of an inch too shallow and I had to add a piece to it it's just funny seeing um, taking this apart and the backer was off square as well most of 98% of what's on this channel is projects for customers. So they go to someone's home and I never see them again. So I don't have a lot of pieces that showcase just how far my skill set has come. So taking this apart, it, it was, I was really chuckling quite a bit at um, how many mistakes were on this, mistakes that I mention every week on this channel. It was a great learning experience. Um, I don't keep a journal or anything in my personal life, but this YouTube channel has kind of turned into, into a journal. And then I could just put all this back together. Um, so you could see the backer is really what squares it up, and my original backer wasn't square, so obviously that wouldn't have squared it up checking all of my diagonals to make sure it's square. This is a much more manageable cubby. Obviously the middle is going to be smaller at this point, but in general it's it's still pretty much the same design. These little shelves had to be cut down. The, the fronts were all a little off now because like I said, I had tweaked them to account for the fact that it was unsquare. And then for the bottom, like I said, I made it a quarter inch too short. So I added quarter inch shims underneath the wheels. I could slide this into place and then put the top on. So this is a pretty simple upgrade to, well, I'm considering an upgrade to the shop and being able to reuse materials without spending any money. So with the top in place, I was pleasantly surprised. The only part that was off was this one side was a little too low, which is most likely a problem with the floor, not the cabinet. In order to fix that, I just added these um, shims underneath the top and that will lift up this corner. You can see I actually had a little bit of a, of a ledge. It was sitting on a ledge once I fixed the top because it, the, the top carcass of the cabinet actually sits inside the rim of that oak. So I had it a little off and once I, once I changed that, I actually needed to shim a little bit more. But all I did was I, I attached those watch, washers underneath the top and it worked out quite nicely. In order to attach the hardware for uh, the router um, plate, I had to cut some corners, which will probably cause some dust to go into these cat these cubbies, but I honestly didn't use this with dust collection anyways. And then little things like I had to re-drill all the holes for adding the wires and whatnot because I had cut this down. They were no longer there. I could reattach the face to um, the front of this. And then, like I said, I ended up having to pop all the fronts off of these. I didn't film it in order to get those to fit. And then I could start putting all of the hardware back on. I could add the new T-Track in place. And then it's really starting to look like a nice um, addition to the shop at this point. So there's little nooks in the back, which is, which is because this was too short, but I wasn't going to buy new stuff. And it's actually going to work out nicely because that will be how I can take the fence on and off because I'm, I'm going to have to move it a lot 
um, I'm assuming for when I'm using the table saw and then I could plop the plate in place like I said I already had this so what it, I didn't spend any money on it I already had the plate and the hardware this kit came from from Rockler can make sure my fence will slide over this everything's nice and square I'm assuming I'm gonna have to make some adjustments along the way but for now this is basically what that looks like and like I said it was a fun learning experience for myself it was interesting to see mistakes that I used to make which are mistakes that I now tell other people not to make and I really think it's going to not only free up a bunch of space but now that it's it's realigned essentially it's gonna be more accurate going forward